It's uh, Blaine here, and we are going to do a flight today uh, in the 747-800. I uh, I'm sorry that I was a bit late to it. I've been I reformatted reformatted my computer, and because of that, I had to redo a whole bunch of changes in uh, uh, in OBS. So I hope that everything works out, and uh, and our flight's good today. So I was also trying to get the Ortho 4XP scenery to work for Albuquerque, and uh, at the last stage of it creating, it didn't actually work. So because of that, uh, we don't have beautiful scenery for Albuquerque, but we will soon. We will have nice scenery for Phoenix, though. I've, I've uh, got the scenery for Ortho working in Phoenix, uh, so that is good. So we are going to do a cargo flight in the uh, SSG 747-800. Um, it's still the version 1, because uh, it's I have, I have version 2, and I've done a bunch of flights on it. But there's a lot of bugs that are need to be worked out, and, you know, they sold it on being a brand new aircraft, but it's still got a lot of lot of things that are needing to be fixed. The version 1 has a lot of things that still need to be fixed, but at least I know what the issues are in that, and I can get, oh, I can work around them, so um, this is at least a more stable aircraft. I never thought I'd say that for a flying dumpster. <laughs> Uh, so let's get into it. Let's get in the aircraft and uh, and do it. So we are cold and dark. So the first thing we're going to do is get some power into here. So we are going to turn. It's been a while since I've flown this aircraft, so I'm going to follow my procedure that I have over here and try to remember everything I can. Okay. So battery standby power. Standby power to auto. Bus ties and generator controls. Pump to auxiliary, hydraulics, and then external power should become available, and it is. And we're on ground power now, so that's good. Set the lighting as we need, although it doesn't really make a difference. This um, this aircraft is it's it's a good aircraft, and it's not a good aircraft. It's it's good because. It does what you need it to do. It works, but uh, it could work a heck of a lot better if uh, if SSG really wanted to make like a PDMG quality aircraft. Uh, I think all of us on X Plane are secretly we're we're hoping that you know PMDG will will finally say, hey X Plane, we want to be a part of you. Uh, and two things will happen. One, we'll get an absolutely amazing study level aircraft that we can all use. And two, all of the other people that are creating payware aircrafts will be uh, a little bit scared into getting their stuff together so that we can actually have a good aircraft. So, okay, we've changed the lighting now. This um, procedure that I used, I came up with it in 2018, and it does work. So what I'll do is, uh, in the when I upload this to my YouTube channel, I'll also put a link to this procedure, and you can download it and use it. And uh, it has uh, what you have to do. It has the screenshots to know what to click and where to click it. Um, and it's just a solid procedure. So yeah, absolutely feel free to use it. Uh, engine controls. Controls, utility, and then lights on, which I only think we need the strobe probably on. Uh, it says wing and nav. I guess that's true. Let them know that we're doing stuff. And then we want to align the IRS. Uh, in this aircraft, in the version 1, you can obviously hit align IRS. It doesn't do anything. Like the switches work, but the actual alignment of the IRS doesn't work. So you just you just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, and then we go to the FMC, and um, is there a way to make that brighter? No. Normally, what you would do when you align the IRS is you would go here and you would click this, and then it would ask you to select the. Uh, it would say enter IRS position, but it doesn't, it just does that. So, there you go. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go to the... Um, is this going to work? No, that one doesn't. We're going to go to the flight assist pad. I guess I didn't have this one set up here, so I'll have to do it so that we can use it. I guess this is as good as we're going to have for, for that. How did I do this again? The 
this one was really weird. Because there's this underhang thing that you gotta use. And then you can't obviously see it, so... That's, you know what, that's okay. Uh, I guess we'll, I guess we'll use that, yeah. Okay, so we wanted to turn this on. And for the options. For the sake of, of just the show in that, we'll go, uh, we'll open all the doors. Lots of things in pounds. Okay, so what are we doing here now? We have to enter the payload. And the fuel. Now this, this one here was like really, really janky. It doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to just, I'm not going to use this <laughs> because it, it never worked the way it was supposed to. Um, but I will use the information off of SimBrief and then we'll upload it. Payload is 234. I mean, I guess I could try it. Uh, uh, crap options. Nope. And then I turned it off. Pounds. Payload. See, like, it's it's continually climbing, right? Like, it, it doesn't... Oh, I guess I can use... I didn't know I can use the scroll wheel. That's kind of cool. The interesting thing, though, is it says my payload is supposed to be 234, but I can't... I don't know how to get it to go up in, like, intervals of... do that it just goes like 300 right it doesn't and it says that it's 136 percent of the load which is kind of weird because if i go 100 percent, it's at 100 percent of load which is total payload weight it's just it's yeah it's really i don't know it's really weird does hitting shift or control do anything no it doesn't okay we'll do it the old-fashioned way then so payload weight is supposed to be 234 and then my fuel weight is going to be 51599. There we go. At least that at least that works now. So, I wonder if I go to here and then I go back to here which is yeah, it doesn't even doesn't even show it. It's just it's really weird that it never worked like that. So, but oh well. If we go to the outside of the aircraft, though, we can see here, hey, all the doors are open. They're loading stuff. So, let's remember to close those. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's done. So now we want to uh, make sure that all the fuel pumps are set to off. Oop. Which they are. Cross feeds are... Uh, it says set to on. That's kind of anti-ice we want to make sure is off, which it is. Uh, okay, so window heat... Yaw dampers, uh, da, 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 da. and then APU. Okay. So APU then would be turn APU on, and we have to turn obviously a fuel fuel pump on for this one. Use the center for that, and then APU start and then it'll come on in just a minute we'll basically see that where it says APU gen the thing will pop up and then we can turn it on and then APU bleed. Uh, with that, we're going to turn off the battery because we don't need the battery on. And then when we go to here, we're going to disconnect the GPU. Well, it's already disconnected, so okay, we're good then. Um, oh, overhead panel. Okay, so we need to now turn the packs on. The isolation valves on. APU bleed is already on. So now the uh, now the FMC is where we're gonna do we're gonna do 
do our stuff here. And this has to be done very specifically, otherwise it will screw stuff up. So we are in Albuquerque, so K-A-B-Q. Our gate, I think, is just like... It just says cargo apron, so we won't even put it on there. Uh, so we've done the position. This is the position initial page, so now we go to root. The runway we're departing is 08, which is good because that's a very long runway. And then Phoenix, KPHX. Uh, what did I enter? Oh, I didn't enter the X. Flight nine, our flight is 175. Although we have a different call sign, it's uh, now um, GTI or Giant. That's their call sign for Atlas Air. Okay, so we entered all that, so we're going to go ahead and activate. Yep. And then we go to Route 2, and this is where we go to Performance. Okay, so performance line select weight okay line select cruise altitude which was 36,000 um, and then oh enter reserves and cost index okay silly I should have done that first that's fine though Reserves are going to be 10. That's fine. We go to thrust limit. Uh, we're not going to use a thrust limit. Let's confirm the temperature, though. And it is 11 degrees, so that's, that's fine. Okay, thrust limit, and then we go to takeoff. And then we go to, we're going to do flaps 10 for our departure. Now, do I do flaps first? Hold on. No, I don't. That was the kicker. You have to do flaps uh, separately for this. So the trim is 7.3. So we're going to set the trim there. It's that NU number that you can see. Trim is now set. That's good. And then... Come back to that, okay. And then we choose our routing. So then we go to departure and arrival. We are departing Albuquerque, and we are departing runway 8. Taking the Roadrunner 3 with the Zuni transition. Execute. And then we're going to go to Phoenix arrival. We take the Eagle 6 with the Zuni transition. And we're going to do ILS 8. Now... I can't remember the transition we need to use for this one, so I'll just go ahead and look it up. Okay, so Phoenix. <sighs> hate that stupid error. Unable cruise alt. So the approach is... A L L S. Okay, we'll just use that, I guess. Then hit execute. We'll go to our routing now and make sure that everything is supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. So we'll go to plan, set the range to 5. We're going to hit step here, so. Speedy. Okay, so. Oh, base is there. Okay, so oh, base, and then we have a discontinuity. So we'll go ahead and fix that. Execute. And then if I hit step, Alice. Unable cruise. You know what? Yeah, this unable cruise alt thing is irritating. What it is, is it has to do with we're too heavy and we shouldn't be going that high or something. It's it's something to do with that, but I can't... I'm not going to change the flight amount that um, 
did it set? I think I think normally on this airway you do forty one thousand. Um but I'll just leave it as and I'll just hit clear. This is another one of those like bugs where it could fix it and be better. So yeah, and so what we'll do is when we go to get from Obase to uh, Alice here, what I'll do probably is I'll probably vector the aircraft a little bit so that we're running parallel and then we'll do a reciprocal course to the approach. Okay, so that looks good. Back to plan. Did this have the... Oh yeah, it did. It did have the, the one where you could go down and see the actual taxiways. That's really cool. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all set. Okay, excellent. So we're going to go to the FMC. We're going to go to Menu. And then... Thrust Limit. Enter outside temp. It's 11, but I'll just go ahead and enter it anyway. Okay, and then we go to takeoff, and then we enter our flaps, which is going to be 10. Then we line select our V speeds. So 170 is going to be our V speed. So 170 plus 15 is 185. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to configure the uh, MCP. So I need to find out what our departure altitude is from Albuquerque. SID for. Roadrunner 3. Climb heading 079 to 5860, then direct Tyler. Uh, turn left, direct Roadrunner 10,000. Okay, so there is... So we climb to 5800, and then we commence our turn. So yeah, we could do we could do the 10,000, that's fine. We have to be at or above 10,000 for Roadrunner, so that's, that's okay. Um... Runway heading is 079. Flight director on, flight director on, auto throttle on, uh, arm, VNAV, and LNAV. Cruise altitude is set, set auto brakes to RTO. Okay, and then we're going to turn the uh, all of the fuel pumps on. And then we're going to turn the first three hydraulics, we're going to turn the beacon on. Okay, and then the cross feeds. Okay, and then hydraulics we're going to turn on. Or to auto, I should say, my bad. Okay. Packs uh, 2 and 3 we're going to turn off. Engine bleeds we're going to turn on. We're going to call for a push. Round of cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Okay. 3022 is the Albuquerque altimeter, which it still is. Gonna set the decision height to 200. We're gonna turn weather on. And I think everything else is pretty good for that. EPU is running. Okay. I'm going to call the tug. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. I'm going to close all the doors. OK. 
okay, and then we start the engines and we're good. FMC, we're gonna go to legs. Are these two tied together? Progress. Yeah, they are tied together. Darn. Okay. It says fuel low, I should see what. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Okay. Connecting the toe. Connecting the toe. Okay, so our let's see here, um toe connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. So our taxi is going to be Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Charlie, Golf. So just before the runway, uh, runway three zero, we're going to turn left to the hold of zero eight. Okay, uh, ready to connect. Start engines. Let me just take a look here. Okay, we're going to put the strobe on. Everything here looks. Good, I do believe. Okay. Uh, Alright, let's go ahead and start those engines then. So we're going to go three and four. We're going to turn the cutoffs to run. And then we're going to pull three and four. And we're going to release the park brake. Starting pushback. Uh, the engines have fired. Now what I'll do is I'll put the flaps down. Okay, so the engines are good. Turn on one and two, and we'll fire one and two. Everything looks okay up here. Yeah, like the the SSG version one, like it has no pressurization you have to add. It doesn't have like up in the top corner here where it says center air data. There's like other stuff that needs to be added, and there's other stuff that's supposed to be modeled, and it's not. Um, it's kind of like this right here. If I click the where it says auto select norm, you can't see the cursor, but like if I click that, nothing happens. It's just painted, right? So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird that that's the case. Battery off. I guess I should turn the battery on. I thought that's something that you would want to have on all the time, but I'll play your game. Okay, so all engines have fired. We're good. Uh, flaps are at 10, so what we're going to do now is turn the APU off. The APU is off, and then we're going to turn the packs on so we don't suffocate. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Disconnecting Next tow. One, last Stand by. Pump to auto. Uh, anti ice we don't need, so that's fine. Parking brake is set. Auto brake is set. So as you can see, um, where it says. Uh, 
parking brake and auto brake set, we no longer have any red or orange alerts there, so that means that we've started everything correctly. Okay, so other than that, I think we are good. Echo is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. I should change the volume because that's super loud. ready to go. Let's see here. Flaps are good. Uh, okay, so we want to turn our taxi light on. And I think we're ready to go. Okay, parking brake off. Let's get a little bit of power to this guy and let's get out of here. be an interesting turn because you know I'm not supposed to drive on this but you gotta do what you gotta do. Just clip the paint. Look at that. doing that. I'm gonna, what's our ground speed at 14? Okay. I'm gonna go to the tablet here and I'm gonna change the sound again because damn. This was another one where I couldn't like engines very low. Yes, thank god. One of the things that happens with this aircraft is that when it like when you first download it it has everything set to, like, maximum. I don't know why. <laughs> and it, it, it blasts your eardrums. It's just like, Aah! when you start it, so. Yeah, that's, that's much better. Much better to listen to. So when we come up here, we're going to do a hard left-hand turn onto golf. I guess I don't need the wing light on. There's no reason for that. It'll be a lot better once I have... I've, so what happened was I had ortho scenery created for a long time. But I didn't really, like, the uh, tutorial that I was using wasn't that good, and so it caused me to, like, I had the ortho created, but I didn't layer it correctly, and it didn't produce correctly, so it just looked like crap. So now that I have a really good, uh, a really good uh, procedure that I've found, and I know how to make the ZL tiles and stuff like that, it's a lot the scenery, like I was did a flight to Los Angeles the other day, or from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, and the ortho was fantastic, so looks really good. Wide turn, wide turn. That's the other thing, this, this plane is like driving a tank, like the wings are so big, it's kind of funny.
I mean, you think about it, like, this aircraft is what launches, like, or which transports space shuttles. So, it's pretty wild. Okay. So we have 13,793 feet, which I think will be more than enough to get us off the ground. Slow the engines down, so we'll return. Okay. I think we're good there. Let's put the parking brake up. Change our lights. Uh, all of these lights are good. Okay. So, flight path vector. Lights are good. So we need FPV and toga, and we're good to go. Okay. I'm going to switch this to uh, that so we can see where we're going. So we're going to fly... Uh, and then we're going to crawl, we're going to basically fly and then we're going to turn ourselves direct to Tyler. I'll switch over to the SID departure. Alrighty then, so let's, uh, let's do this. Alright, so, flight path vector, parking brake coming off, powering up. Seventy and Toga Soundtrack on uh, Hello Air speeds alive <laughs> Wow Get up, get up, get up B1 Rotate, I'm gonna okay, rotate it. <laughs> Holy crap. Gear up. Okay, maybe that runway wasn't long enough. <laughs> Fuel center cut off low. Alright, we'll turn off the pumps for center. And we're gonna commence our turn. Flaps down. I can tell I haven't flown this aircraft in a while. There we go. Trying to stay on the diamond here. But anyway. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit Command A. And then we're going to go direct to Roadrunner. And at Roadrunner, we need to be above 10,000, which we're going to probably likely be, so. Does this like weird like air thing coming off the wing? I don't really like it per se, but it's whatever. Uh, pretty soon we'll have amazing ortho scenery for Albuquerque and it'll be good. Approaching 
approaching 10,000. All right, let's go to 20 then. We need to be above 12 for speedy. So we're going to go to 20 then. Cycle VNAV. Yep. Above 10,000, we can turn our lights off. So that is good. Leaving up, leaving up a cookie behind. As the climb's like losing its mind, it's like, yeah, let's climb really, really fast, and then let's stop for some reason as the barber pole comes increasingly close. The vertical speed is like losing its mind here. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, this is really weird that it keeps doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and correct that. Vertical speed 2200, leave it at that. speed real quick here. 318 for 17. Leave it at 2000. Let's see what it does there. Okay, we are uh, going to Python next, which Python we don't have any issue or any altitude. So with Zuni, we need to be at 19 for our transition, and we're going to make that no problem. So... seems to be the sweet spot for a climb, which is good. Normally prompts us for standard altitude, but it doesn't. So if we go to our FMC, put it, we go to progress. Top of climb, we're expected to arrive at 22.45 Zulu. And it is currently 
2040. So five minutes will be a top decline. That's pretty good. Everything's looking good. It'd be nice if there was the integration with uh, with this as there is on Zebo, where you can actually have the chart and see where you are on the route. That's pretty amazingly helpful. Actually, this is probably wrong. It's probably going to take longer because it said that it was... Come on. Stop zooming in. Because we need to go to 36, right? So. Now, if I was to. If I was to go back to VNAV, what's that going to do? Let's take a look here. It may climb higher, and that's fine. It doesn't. It's not, it's not a bad thing if it climbs higher. It's just you got to monitor your speed, because if you're climbing at, like, you know. Yeah, so this one's saying that we can climb. It's kind of thinking about what it wants to do. But if you if it climbs super, super fast, you'll go into a stall, and then that's not good either. So I like to be on Vena, but there are times when it's kind of like... check what the Phoenix ADDS is, even though we're not going to be there for a while. Three zero zero four. Okay, we'll leave it at that and we'll do it at the end then. Okay, so I'm just going to, everything looks fine here, I'm just going to do a couple of uh, screenshots. See uh, a couple of pictures outside the aircraft. And I haven't updated these in quite a while, I guess. Yeah, I guess I haven't. Wow. I used to have like a a wing one, but that's not it's not good, I guess. Barber pole, which is this red line here, is now at 350. It's getting closer and it's kind of going to 340. So what this means is that we're going to overspeed in a minute. So because of that, I am going to go ahead and go to vertical speed and set it to 1800 because otherwise...
Otherwise, the barber pole is going to hit us. Still going, hey? Why the heck is it doing that? I mean, we're at 311 and it's saying that it's now approaching 330. It's just... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit vertical or VNAV and let it do its thing and see what happens in a minute, I guess. So I'm going to switch over to the approach, or to the, uh, switch over to the, uh, star. Gallop, Zuni. Okay, so our first, uh, approach is below 33,000. Above 30,000 for peso. So I'm going to set the um, altitude to, to peso. Just about at top of climb. I guess I hadn't thought of this, but we're traveling at Mach 8.5, or Mach, <laughs> Mach 8.5, Warp 1, engage, no, traveling at 0.85 of Mach, which is pretty hard, pretty damn fast. Um, I wonder if that will work on my converter app, if it'll tell me that. Speed. So we're doing fine then. So we're going to be, it says, so Zuni is, we're going to be at Zuni. Zuni is 33 nautical miles, 2252. ETA 2252, and it says it's 2252. That's kind of funny. Yeah, it's not going to take us long to go that distance. Okay, so we're traveling at Mach 0.85. Let's, I want to see what that actually is in terms of speed. Wow, we are traveling at 1,050 kilometers an hour. Or 
652.9 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast. Damn. That's pretty wild. Oh, that says when we're going to hit it. My bad. The actual time is 22.50. Okay, I was looking at that wrong. Wow. I wonder if I can do that chase thing. Let's see. You. Just that one. Linear spot. No. Still spot. Yeah, here we go. Wow. We are cruising. <laughs> we are cruising. But this is basically what you do when you get to cruise. You, uh, you know, you play, uh, <laughs> play on your phone, I guess, or you uh, talk about stuff with your other pilot, because uh, this is really all there is to do. I wonder, actually, I'm going to take a look at something here. I used to have... speed 0.85 is what its current is. Point eight five is the cruise speed. Okay. Seeing if we could push that maybe, but I guess we uh, I guess we can't. Okay, so we passed Zuni. And then we have uh, Dojo and Slider. Top of descent is just after Slider. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm gonna be happy once I have Ortho, because, like, this is, like, just such crappy... It's, like, such crappy ground to look at. I'd rather be looking at, like, mountains and hills and stuff like that. Yeah, even the features would be... It was it was pretty staggering, actually, where uh, you could tell where the tile ends and where it starts, and yeah, like, it's just, it's so, so worth it to make it look good. So, I don't know if it gave a distance to... I think it will, yeah, it gave a distance to our top of descent. Oh, it doesn't, eh? So it says we're going to reach slider in... 2257 and it is 2255 slider it's just after that if I go here so it's 20 nautical to that so yeah we have to be below 33,000 so I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to 30 I'll go to 30 I'll set the uh, thing for. I don't know. We'll do our uh, our descent checklist in just a couple of minutes. Actually, when are we going to get to Phoenix? We're going to get to Phoenix at 2340, it says. 2340 is when we'll arrive. It's 2256. Okay, we are coming up to top of descent, so we're going to go ahead and configure for that. So we're going to set it to 30. Go to our FMC, we're going to go to init ref here. We're going to select our V speed to be 155 and flaps 30 and enter that in there. Our approach course is going to be 079 because it's the same, it's the same runway heading, which is kind of funny. So uh, essentially, yeah, we've configured for top of descent just by doing that. So good.
should start descending in just a moment. Trying to find something here. Okay, and we're descending. Good to hear. Okay, we're descending good, coming up to tens, I think it was. We need to be 270 at tens. We're gonna have a decel coming up. We have to cross tens at 33, which we're going to do. Just want to see when the ortho is actually going to pick up. Cross tens at 32. Okay, so peso, we want to be above 24. Over speed. that was going to happen. Well, I didn't throw the speed brake. That was my problem. Okay. Duh. Yeah, you're supposed to throw the speed brakes. So... So used to Zebo doing like everything for me, so I don't have to think about you know the speed and the uh, stuff like that. So okay, so peso is ten nautical, and we need to be more than where we are. Speed brake extended. Well, yes, of course. Of course the speed brake is extended. I'm aware of it. I'm the one that threw the switch. Vertical speed, 900. We're going to increase that. Peso between 30 and 24, which is fine. 
and then Eagle we want to be above uh, above 18. So we're actually we're not doing too bad. Is my Ortho starting to work now? That's where the Ortho begins. No, not yet. Not yet. All in all, the 747 8 is not, it's not, it's not a bad aircraft, like I've said before. It's just, it could be so much better if they just put the work into it, and they just don't want to. So, that's what you get. Okay, so Eagle is uh, our next one. We want to be at 260 by the time we cross Eagle, and we want to be at above 18. Our speed, we want it to be at 270. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay, Eagle. Speed and our altitude are okay. Okay, Eagle is 16 and we're at 27. We're going to increase that descent a little bit. I'm always like concerned when I do this and I'm in a position where I'm not at the speed I need. Like it says, you know, you have to be above 18 and that's, it's good to be above 18. But if you're above 18 and you're uh, a lot above 18, like if it says be above 18 and you're at like 28, then you got a lot of distance you have to catch up on pretty quick. And so that's what I want to try and do is just like stay ahead of the aircraft. So Eagle is 9 miles, and we're still 7,000 above, so I'm going to increase it even more, because I can. Because I can! So, are we doing... Otex Gino Queenie, I think, is our flight routing? Yeah, it is. Okay. Because after Eagle, this is where you get... This is where the issue presents itself. After you get to Eagle, you get, as you can see, you have Homer, Botox, Gino, and they're all like 10 nautical miles in between. So you don't have a lot of time to catch that to catch that descent rate up. So you want to be ahead of the aircraft. So we're at 24, we're 5. Okay, speed is actually right where we need to be, so that's great. Yeah, I've, what I'm going to do is when we get to uh, when we get to O base, it says on the actual thing. It shows a vector, and then it basically says a vector of 258 degrees. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to just turn around when I am parallel to uh, the first waypoint. What's the first waypoint, actually, on the approach there? Okay, so... Actually, I like is the, is the radar fix to descend, so we don't even have to go that far. Normally I would turn it Sadar, but we don't even have to go that far, so that's good. Okay, how we doing here? Coming up to... So now Homer is our next one. We need to be below... Homer, we need to be below 17. And the one previous to Homer is 14. Or the one after that is 14, so we're going to do that. We're going to go 14,000. Our speed is 260. We need to be at 250. By the time we get to Homer, our speed is okay. We are descending. So we're actually doing good. We're doing good. 
we're gonna be fine. I wanna know when the heck my ortho scenery is gonna take over, because this is not ortho. And I'm coming up to Phoenix, so it should be coming up pretty soon. I have all around Phoenix, like I have four, it's like one, two, three, four, so I wanna know where it's gonna be. Check the altimeter again. Altimeter is 3003. We get to 19, we're going to switch to 3003. Okay, we're doing good. Actually, what I should do is our course is set to. Well, you can't really set your course in this one. It doesn't have Setting, but I should change this to uh, 258 because that's the heading that we're going to want to go on when we get to our thing. Looks like it's set to HPA. Well, I guess not. I guess we're okay. Hmm. Okay, Homer is an 8, so we're going to slow down to 250. Okay, from Homer, we go to Botex, which is uh, between 14 and 13. So I'm gonna slow down this descent. So we're doing we're doing okay now. We're we're caught up on our descent right now, so Yes, I'm aware the speed brake is extended. and we are, we need to be, when we get to Homer, we need to be below 17, which we are. So we can just sit actually at, you know, 13. I'm even going to slow it down further. Okay, BTEX is supposed to be 13, so that's fine. Unless this is the ortho that I'm supposed to have. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, so you can... Yeah, this is so... This is what the ortho looks like. Um, you can actually see the... The, uh, the dunes and stuff are a lot better. Uh, I just thought that there would be better... Sand. <laughs> behind it. When we get to the Phoenix area, though, and we're landing, then we're going to see a way better scenery. Because Phoenix is, is really high quality. I did a bunch of tests on the... Uh, on the different areas that I loaded, so that should be good. Okay, so when we get to when we at 11 for Gino, we need 10, any 7, Obase 7, and then we're going to enter the glide slope. So we get there. Where is the cargo ramp on Phoenix?
cargo ramp is on the completely other side of the airfield. So, okay. So we land on 8, we'll probably take Tango, Echo, Echo 9. Uh, oh, this is going to be a pain. Tango to Echo. Tango. Probably easiest to go. Tango, Delta, Delta 9, Echo 8, cross runway, 25 right, Foxtrot 8, Jeep, and then just. Ugh, it's a long taxi. Oh well. Gino, we want to be at 11. Altitude alert, I've never seen that before. Why does it do that? slowing down because we need to be. Speed brake should help. 12, Gino. So Gino is three, and then we want to be at ten for Queenie, Quenny, or whatever the hell it's called. Gino, we need to be at two thirty, which we're going to be. That's not a problem. So we're doing good. Quenny, we want to be at 10. So I'm going to do this this time. I'm going to recycle VDAV and see if that does anything. And still. Is it still going to do it? Yeah, it still is. Okay, cool. Still going. Quenny, we need to be at 210. Coming into Phoenix now, here we go. Yeah, that ortho in the background there, that looks much better than what you normally see, I guess, so. Even though these like rolling hills and stuff look the way they do, it's just probably, yeah. Okay, so then we wanna go to Haiti. Uh, 7,000, holding it to 210 for our speed. Oh yeah, that's why, because it shows our, like, that extra zero in a vent. That's like our, um, we call our missed approach. That's what we have to do, so that's why. Okay, so Heaney, we want to go to 7,000.
that every time. Okay, so we get to Heaney, and then we go to Obase, and then I'm going to... when we, As soon as we hit Obase, I'm going to put us on a, uh, a heading, a 258, and then we will, when we get to... Uh, uh, what did I say? Actually, Obase is going to be 7 as well, so I don't have to look at that. We'll switch over to the approach chart. I like is where we can actually do it. So I like we need to be at 5,000 to enter the glide slope. Okay, so we will get parallel to uh, parallel to I like, and then we will make a left turn, and we will join the arrival. See that uh, that look now. Um, there we go. There's that ortho. A phoenix. Again, I don't know why there's weird air coming off of the aircraft, but is that rain effects? I wonder. not rain effects, oh well. Yeah, the tiling here, as you can see, is kind of weird, like it shouldn't be doing that, but it could just be that that one block was taken at a different time, and that's likely what happened there, so that's, you really got to try a bunch of different ones and stuff, but yeah, so this is what, um, let's check here, is that looking, is my speed brake engaged? No, okay. 211. Um, okay, we're going to a base next, which is in four. So, uh, if I do this now, damn it, there we go. So yeah, that's what the ortho looks like when it's high res. Like, you can actually, it actually looks like we're flying over a major metropolitan city. So that's what the Phoenix ortho looks like. It actually looks like we're flying over a city, and then said so. That's what the ortho is supposed to look like. Okay, so obase, what we're going to do here is we are going to, as soon as we hit obase, we're going to uh, do our altitude hold here, or our heading hold, and then we're going to, we're going to be good. want to cross our base though. Okay, a list. Nope. We're gonna go heading. Heading. I like is coming up pretty quick here, so we're gonna descend to five thousand. Gonna do two hundred on this one. So we're descending to 5, vertical speed, we want it to be at 1,000, we're going to do our speed to 200, which is fine. And uh, we will join the approach, or join the arrival, when we get to parallel to I like. Yeah, there's no reason for us to go all that way when we can easily just, you know, turn it I like. What I am going to do, though, is give us a little bit extra room to play with, so I'm going to vector us just a little bit this way. And we want to be just a little bit past I like. Airfield is back over there. It's probably right there. But I want to be at 5,000 before I make my turn.
because we want to we want to you have to intercept the glide slope uh, at correct altitudes. Um, usually you can do it above, but I just want to be you know darn sure that we get it. So so we're a little bit past it now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the FMC and I'm going to make I like. Uh, let me just see here. We are past I like. I'm going to give it just a little bit more. Our altitude is on point. Okay, and then we're going to go I like, next waypoint, and we're going to go execute. BNAV, LNAV, it'll turn. What's my speed going to be? Stupid. <sighs> stupid zoom thing. Airspeed low. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Okay, go ahead and set the auto brakes to three because we're a heavy, heavy thing. So yeah, that's what it actually looks like with the ortho being correct. And I mean, Phoenix does have these, like, blocks, so that makes sense that it looks that way. But yeah, so this is the Phoenix with the ortho. Okay, I like coming up to it. Trying to capture the damn glide slope, but it wouldn't work. Localizer is there, so I think we're good. So if I hit V nav and then localizer, I think that'll get us on the right path there. Localizer, come on now. Come on. I screwed it up. I screwed it up, Royal. Still be okay. okay. What's up? Man, it just does not want to. All right, well, do it the hard way then. Tried it to get it into the glide slope, and it wouldn't do it, so it's okay. 
do it the other way. No, oh, we are collect. We are in the glide slope now. There we go. Even better. Yeah, I'm. I've had trouble with that damn turn where I try to make it so that it doesn't doesn't do that. Landing gear coming down. Start APU. Didn't turn my landing lights on. Whoops. Uh, I think we're actually doing okay now. Yeah, we're doing actually, we're doing good. We'll be fine now. A little bit of a crosswind. Well, at the end of the day, all that mattered was that we got it where we needed to be. One thousand. Hey, my aircraft. How are we doing? We are at... is a bit much, but that's okay. I'm going to slow it down since we get there. Flight slow. Flight slow. Flight slow. 300. Flight slow. Yeah, we're out of the glide slope, that's why. Flight slow. Flight slow. Minimums. Flight slow. 200. Flight slow. Flight slow. Flight slow. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink rate. Flight slow. Sink rate. Sink rate. Okay. 40. Okay. 30. 20. 10. Mercer, speed brake extend. That was a bad landing on my part. Sorry about that. <laughs> 80 knots, cancel reversers. And speed brake's coming off. Okay. That was a bad landing. My bad on that one. Flaps coming up. Okay, so where the heck are we now? We are coming up to B7, and we want to do it at B9 is where we want to go. All right. Auto throttle disconnect. Yep. B8. Uh, B9 is where we want to turn. Panicked right down there at the end. <laughs> is this B9? Yes, it is. All right, we're gonna turn here. F9 Golf. Are we gonna hit the bridge? We're we gonna hit the bridge. Oh no, we hit the bridge. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. Okay, so uh, um, we're gonna go Echo to Echo Six.
So we want to go to Echo 6, because that will bring us to Gulf 4, which will bring us to pretty much where we want to go. Seven, go six is where we want to go. So the next one. Thirty-five. Oh, we're going a little bit fast. It is a long taxi though, so. Foxtrot 6, and then this is Gulf 4. We're going to do what Cat Strader did that one time. We're going to park over there, not by the actual other ones. in between the FedEx. Am I going to clip the... I think I might. They weren't expecting a, uh, a big boy to go through. As I'm like, just, just touching the blast shield. It's kind of funny. We have made it to Phoenix, and we are good. Let's go ahead and set the park brake. Switch to APU power. APU bleed, and let's cut the engines off. Uh, you know what I am going to do? I'm going to check my fuel real quick. Let's see here. I have to actually go like right away, so I'm going to do a really, really quick shutdown. Fuel. So that one has the most amount of fuel. Actually, 4.7 is still fine. So we're gonna go to nav overhead. I'll leave that one on for the APU.
Shut off engines. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the fuel pumps. With the exception to number one for the APU. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn our lights off. Beacon, we'll keep the lower one on just because we're still doing stuff. There we go. Lights coming off. Uh, okay, so engine bleeds, we need to wait for that to go. Yaw dampers we can turn off. Window heat we can turn off. EFIS panel we'll put back to that. Weather we can turn off. Disconnect that. Good. Flight directors off. Off. Good engines are just about done. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Packs off. Isolation valves off. APU is still on, so we want to keep that. We're going to go to the tablet now, and we're going to hit the connect GPU. GPU is available, that's good. We're going to turn APU off now. APU is now off. APU bleed is off. Engine bleeds we're going to turn off. Last fuel pump off because we don't need that other one there. We can turn off the engine. Turn off the hydraulics. Buses, utilities, generator controls electric controls. External power we have on, which is fine. Uh, okay, everything else is turned off, I believe, up here. Everything else is turned off here. Packs run, park brake set, GPU connected, that's fine. Okay, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the stem. Okay, so we're going to disconnect the ground power now, so we're going to go to here and go disconnect. It's disconnected now. Standby power we're going to turn to off. Battery to off. And we are cold and dark. So we are back in Phoenix now and we are cold and dark. We're exactly needed to be other than the uh, bad landing I had, <laughs> which I apologize for. Uh, it was a good flight. So I uh, thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Take care. Be sure to hit subscribe to be notified when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching!